Right, what's up everyone? It's been a while since I, I've jumped on here and, and done a video. So I thought I'd come back uh, with, with a bit of a bang and just talk about the muscle building principles, the, the, big, the big rocks, the main, the main juicy things that you need if you want to get bigger now. This is, everyone wants to get bigger and everyone, I'm always getting questions on, on Twitter. You know, when I, when I post content, I mean, messages left, right and centre, you know, what, I, what am I doing wrong? Uh, I can't seem to be building muscle and they, I get hit with paragraphs of just you know, all sorts of information and it's just everyone seems to be following just the, the common trends and, and mistakes now. I just want to go over you know, what I consider the, the three, three big rocks of, of getting bigger and muscle building and what we actually need now. As you all, you all know that I'm just big on the basics, you know, I, I don't like to complicate things and I'm not going to bullshit anyone and sort of all fads and all that stuff because, again, I've got no time for any, any of the shit that's in the industry, so let's go over the, the three main things that, I, as far as I'm concerned, are non-negotiable for muscle building, okay? You take one of these big features away and everything falls to bits, so let's, let's get into it. Right, so number one, it's, it's overload and training now. I've spoken about this in the past now. If we keep coming in the gym and we keep doing exactly the same thing from week to week to week, so over the course of six to eight weeks, we're just doing exactly the same thing. We're not, we're not having more weight on the barbell. It's not a, a slight increase in reps, maybe a little slight increase in volume overall. Well, how are we providing the body with the stimulus to, to, to make the adaptations in order to get bigger? This is where I always talk about, you'll see here, beat the, beat the books, beat the log books. Now, you should be tracking your training. You should know exactly what you've done last week. You should know exactly what you've done six weeks ago. And you should know exactly what you've done on your certain movements a year ago. You've always got data to go back to and you can see the progression. If there isn't progression happening, something needs to change. Okay. Now, I'm not saying you need to progress everything from week to week. But over, over the course of a good few months, if you're not trending upwards, if, you're, if your lifts are not moving in the right direction, well, something needs, to, something needs to give, you need to change something, okay? Now, what I say about beat the books, in terms of muscle building and the hypertrophy rep range we want to be in, we want to be in that 5 to 20 rep range. Now, we're looking to beat all of our lifts in that 5 to 20 rep range. Does doing heavy sets of 2 and heavy sets of 3, is that conducive in the hypertrophy phase? For me, probably not. I think you, the best bang for your buck is that 5 to 20 rep range. As I said, if you're, if you're getting stronger across the board in that rep range, let's, let's take your pecs, for example, your chest. If your bench press is improving, if your weighted dips are improving, your inclined dumbbell press, hammer strength, chest press, anything like that, if all of those movements are trending upwards in that 5 to 20 rep range over the course of 3 to 6 months, you can be pretty damn sure that you're building muscle. These are the signs that you're looking for, okay? So that's, this is a huge non-negotiable for, for muscle building because if that isn't happening, if your training isn't overloading enough, if you're not actually making progress and beating the books, well, nothing's happening, okay? So that's number one. Now, as I said, these are all closely interlinked. Now, this, this won't be able to happen unless number two and number three are in check. So let's get into number two. It's a two to three hundred daily calorie service. Now, there's a lot of information you know, on the internet in terms of people talk about the body recomp, and can, I, I wanna, I wanna build as much muscle as possible without uh, gaining any body fat. I, I wanna stay eight percent body fat and shredded year round while still getting bigger and stronger. Listen, the only people there's there's a couple of examples of people who can eat at maintenance calories and recomp and can build muscle and lose body fat at the same time. Number one, that's going to be a beginner, someone who, who hasn't trained at all in their life. Number two, someone who's coming back after a long layoff from training. They could have trained for a couple of years, but they've been out of the gym for a year, and then they come back. And then number three is someone who is severely obese, someone who may be 30% plus body fat. They're going to be able to build muscle and lose body fat at the same time. But for advanced trainees, uh, people who've got a bit, little bit more experience under their belt, it's going to be extremely hard to try and body recomp, so try and build muscle and lose fat at the same time. Can it be done? Probably yeah, but it's gonna it's gonna take it takes an extremely long time 
and you will be better just eating a slight surface. I'm not being I'm not being worried about accumulating a tiny bit of body fat, which is easily taken care of. So again, the most optimal way in order to actually build muscle is, is to be in a two to three hundred daily calorie service for a good amount of time. Now you don't get anything out of eating an extra seven eight hundred calories over maintenance every day. All we need is two to three hundred. That will suffice. Any more than that, and you're just going to start gaining any amount of body fat, which we don't need which then we'll have to take a longer time down the line to actually cut off when we do a dieting phase. So it doesn't make sense, just keep it in check. So for example, it's obvious, let's say your maintenance calories is 3,000. Just eat 3,200, 3,300, okay? See how your body weight is just on the scale after a week or two. If there's no change, just add an extra 100 calories, go to 3,400. Again, monitor how things go after a week or two. Again, if there was no change, add a hundred calories until you slowly start to see your body weight maybe creep up around 0.5 to 1% of body weight per month. And once we're in that range, just stick with your calories. Again, we don't get anything out of getting fat as fuck and anything 7, 800 to 1,000 calories over our maintenance. It makes no sense. I've been there and done that, by the way, so believe me, it makes no sense to do that. So, slight 200 to 300 a daily surplus. So, overloading training, two to three hundred daily surplus, and then the big one, the final one again, they're all interlinked, is recovery. And everyone always goes on about recovery. You know, you need to be recovered and all this stuff. Every, everyone knows how important it is, but people neglect it. Now, that comes in forms of the nutrition is part of recovery. Sleep, rest days, deloads, stress. So, sleep. We obviously know, everyone knows, seven to nine hours sleep, it's, it's a broken record on Twitter and on the internet. But the thing is, if you're, the amount of people that I've seen who are trying to build muscle, but then they're sleeping four hours a night, it's, it's just idiotic. They're sleeping four hours a night and they're worrying about creatine, they're worrying about what supplements to take, they're worrying about why they're not getting stronger in the gym. If you're only sleeping four hours, you are genuinely shooting yourself in the foot. So you need to be looking for that seven to nine hours consistently and non-negotiable. Now obviously one night of bad sleep is not going to kill, it kill your gains but it's you know over the course of a, of a month if you're, if you're banking 95% of your night's sleep and it's good 7 to 9 hours that's what you're looking for okay the odd bad night's sleep is not going to kill anything okay that's sleep, rest days again you're not going to be training 7 days a week I personally just I don't think that's the way to do it I think everyone, everyone can benefit from at least one to two rest days per week we grow outside of the gym and we don't grow in it. This is just common knowledge. Now, again, I know you want to train hard, but you don't need to be in the gym seven days a week. Most people are going to do very, very well on a four to five day training split. Okay, so you recover outside the gym and not in it. Okay, that's a no brainer. D loads, I spoke about this before. If you go back on my channel here, you'll be able to find the video on D loads and how we do them and how we implement them and what they're for. But mainly, you know, deload is after a pr pr progressive period of uh, intense training and hard training over time, we may, you w training will get harder each week and you'll reach a point where the cumulative fatigue gets that high that we need to pull back. Again, that will be anywhere from four to 12 weeks of training before you need to pull back, depending on the individual. Go back and watch the deload video. That's on my channel here, you'll see about deloads. And then stress, stress management. Now. Again, if you can be doing good training, you can be in a surplus. But if you're if you're chronically stressed the fuck out, if you are, you could be you could be moving country, you could be changing jobs, you could just be you could be a, a, a new dad who's having a child. Or stress stress is just a huge thing. If you're in an extremely stressed situation, it's gonna be pretty hard to build muscle. So you need to be aware of that. But other other lifestyle factors it plays it plays a huge role in your ability to build muscle. So again. Just be wary of that and try to keep your stress in check as much as you can. Obviously, it's life, stress happens, but you just need to be aware. If you're trying to actually build muscle, you don't want to be going through a, a, a very, very stressful stage of your life because it's, it's going to be very difficult, okay? So that's recovery. That's the big, the big rocks of recovery. Now, it's all about combining all of these three, all three are linked together. If you take one of these away, everything is fucked. It's that simple. These are the three basic. Nail, if you nail these three, you're gonna get bigger. If you nail these three for the year straight, just watch what, what watch what happens to your physique in a year. No flashy bullshit, no no unnecessary shit is needed. 
just nail these days. I, I, I'm just big on the basics. People are trying to build muscle, and then they're not eating enough food, they're eating like little girls. And then, you know, they're sleeping four hours a night, and then they're, they're sitting on the phone in the gym, and they're, they're not training intense enough. Like, what do you expect? Training needs to be hard enough, slight surface, and keeping your recovery in check. Do them three for a long time. Do them for, do them for a decade, never mind a year. You, you do that for a decade, that's how you're going to become an absolute unit, okay? So that's the three muscle building non-negotiables for me, so let me know what you think. Any questions, anything you want me to go over in a future videos, just drop them in the comments down below. And I'll speak to you all soon.